Hi, my name is Angela Young. I'm the project manager and structural analyst. I graduate on fall 2012. Hi, my name is Noel Jericho Bouliot. I'm a structural analyst and I graduate in spring 2013. Hi, my name is Christopher Grajo. I'm a designer and I graduate in spring 2013. Hi, I'm Karen Vera. I'm a designer and I graduate in spring 2013. Hello, my name is Georgina Um. I'm a materials analyst and I graduate fall 2012. Hi, my name is Bernie Reyna. I'm a construction manager and I graduate in, on spring 2013. And we're on the Steel Bridge team! We decided to use the SAP 2000 software program because we were advised by members of previous Steel Bridge teams. We knew that Professor Dowell, who is a structural professor year at San Diego State University, is a strong advocate of the program. Furthermore, SAP 2000 was the most readily available program for us to use and it wasn't overly complicated to use. During the analysis process, the load, which is a weighted box, could not be represented as a distributed load in the program. Therefore, we had to treat the four corners of the box as point loads. We also had to take into account the preloads specified in the rules of the competition. After placing the points in the correct locations, which is along the cantilever and the backspan of the bridge, and assigning the loads associated with them, we simply had to run the analysis to generate our deflection data. Several factors came into play that affected the analysis of the bridge. From a design standpoint, we could point at the placement of the legs, the angles of the trusses, the length and width of the members, among other things, as possible contributing factors. From a materials point of view, we needed to account for the materials available to us, the diameters of these materials, and the strength of the materials. As structure analysts, the whole team worked around me and Noel's results. The whole team depended on these results to understand and convey the ideas of different designs and the material characteristics that were presented. Our results also helped us as a whole team learn how different parameters or changes behave on the structure. As Noel stated before, the chosen program, SAP 2000, was used and modified to confirm our data and our predictions. The goal of the team this year is to place higher than previous steel bridge. Last year we placed at 8th and this year we want to at least place the top 3. Therefore, we base our results on the scoring. The scoring is based on the deflection of the bridge both vertical and lateral. There are multiple events that our bridge will tackle. Preloads will be placed prior to these events to stabilize the bridge. First is the sway event, and then this back, the backspan loading event, and then the, finally the cantilever. Noel and I tried our best to mimic the field conditions by doing step-by-step -step loading of the bridge in order to get the best results in compliance of the rules. We will show our highest deflections via TB, TC, and the sway deflection, which is the lateral loading. Our highest deflection in the backspan vertical loading and cantilever vertical loading is shown. The 2013 bridge is based off of the 2012 bridge design. Although the visual aspect looks very similar, the, the actual bridge for 2013 was redesigned to meet the specifications and the dimensions that were given for the 2013 criteria. Karen Vera will talk a little bit about that later in the dimensions. Let's begin with the designing of the leg. Here I have the actual 2012 bridge for their leg. If we look a little bit closer, we can see that right around here, there was actually a buckling. For the 2013 bridge, we took their design and we improved upon it. The 2013 design is now actually a triangular shape. This design minimizes the weight of the bridge and maintains the goal of deflection. 
Lastly, we have the design portion that takes into consideration sway. To provide for the least amount of deflection on our bridge, we created a triangular piece that protrudes outward from our bridge. This protruding triangular piece maximizes cost, efficiency, and weight. Rather than taking a diagonal cross member to span across the whole bridge, this triangular piece has less material, thus maximizing all of the above. We took many things into mind when designing our bridge. One main element of the bridge to consider was the dimensioning. Restraints with height and overall length were a main factor in the design. The dimensions of the bridge could be no taller than 5 feet and no longer than 17 feet. The total length of our bridge is 16.5 feet and the height of each leg is 1.8 feet giving our bridge an overall height of 3 feet. Construction efficiency was our main concern when designing. Competition rules state that the bridge will be over a 12-foot river with a coffer dam in the middle. Team members will hand off members to the other side of the coffer dam to people on the other side, all while being careful to avoid stepping and dropping pieces in the river. We maximize the length of each member to facilitate the construction and connection of the bridge. Ten of the members are 2.9 feet long and two members at the end of the cantilever are a length of 1.7 feet. This allows team members to easily connect each member without having to reach too far over when bolting the bridge together. We designed the angles on the members with 112 degree angle to give the bridge less frequency and to allow us to use less material when fabricating the bridge. The competition rules state that the cantilever could be no longer than 3.5 feet and would be loaded with 1,000 pounds. Knowing that the smaller the cantilever, the better, we designed our bridge with a smaller cantilever to maximize strength and decrease the possibility of a failure. Our crossbars are a length of 3 feet. As you can see, we chose to have two crossbars at each connection to help with sway and construction. We also chose to connect a bar at each leg to minimize time and facilitate the overall construction of the bridge. Materials and fabrication is what takes our bridge from design to actuality. When we were trying to pick the material, we looked at many different types of materials, such as KVA stainless steel, mild steel, and chromoly. We looked at its cost to weight to strength ratio. After analyzing countless, countless types of steels, we narrowed it down to A36, mild steel 1018, 1026, chromoly 4130, and KVA stainless steel 410. As we can see in this chart, 1018 mild steel cold rolled won the competition with a total of 534.51 points. KVA 410 in its hardened condition came in second place with 468.63 and 63 points. This was based on its tensile strength, yield strength, the cost of the material, how easy it is to get the material, the material's density, its ductility, and how easy it is to work with. All of these factors play an important role. If one of these factors is not able to be used well, the material will not succeed. For example, if the material is not strong enough, we will not be able to use it. If it costs too much, we won't be able to purchase it. If it weighs too much, we will lose a competition in the weight category. After looking at this chart, we felt comfortable using 1018 mild steel because of its great strength to cost ratio. As we see here, it got a 100 out of 100 points as far as cost. Also, it is incredibly easy to work with. 1018 mild steel is the most commercially used steel. It is incredibly cheap and is incredibly strong for its price. Next, we analyzed KVA 410 in its hardened condition. We fell in love with how strong its yield and tensile strength is. We decided to use this material specifically for our legs. 
that will be carrying our bridge with a 2,500 pound load on it. KVA 410 stainless steel is an innovative material. It is not very commonly used in bridges. However, because of the participation of KVA company, they gave us the material for free. As we see here, the cost is incredibly high for this material. However, when it's free, along with, it, along with its great strength, we feel comfortable that this will be a great addition to our bridge. After selecting our material, we decided to look at different types of connections for our bridge. Thank you, Yorgo. Designing connections that comply with the competition rules is a hard task. As a team, we determined after talking to the structural team that that would be one of the places where most of the stress is localized. Therefore, our design is going to be critical to the integrity of the bridge. So to start, let's look at some of the competition rules that we have to comply our design. So as you can see, from this list, uh, the most important rule is that we select a, des a design that has a connection that forms flat fading surfaces with the bolt crossing through it. This connection was selected based on the premise that most of the stress is going to be localized on the bolts itself. After analyzing the rules, we came up with two different connections. The first one is going to connect our square members. We're going to use the splice connection, where it takes a smaller square tube that, in, that gets inserted into the two larger square tube members. This will take the stress away from any of the bolts and put them directly on the material. We feel that this way, our, stri our, our bridge will hold up much better. The second connection, we will use a flat plate that Bernie will talk about. So as you can see, for the circular tubing, we design end plate connections. This connection consists of plates welded to the end of each circular member. Those plates form a flat fitting surface that is connected with a series of bolts. In order to fabricate and construct our bridge, we will be employing cutting edge methods in order to be as precise as possible. First, we'll start by cutting our, our webbing pattern using a flow jet machine. Next, we'll be using a laser in order to cut our member parts to a precise length. So after having all our individual pieces cut, we will be employing a TIG welding process in order to weld our stainless steel parts and a MIG welding process in order to weld our mild steel parts. These will create assemblies that have the rigid strength and we're expecting great results out of that. Thus, this concludes the type of material we're using, the processes we're going to cut our material, and how we're going to weld them together. Thank you very much. Thank you.